guys, this is Matt Brunet, and welcome to Movie News Weekly, hosted by Filmbook. Now before we begin, let's take a look at what we got in this week's news, which includes The Hunger Games is thankful for still being in first place, why Universal wanted to make By the Sea, we'll see how Evil Knievel broke some of his bones, that Fantastic Four sequel no one wanted might not even happen after all, Tupac will be making a comeback in China, Jennifer Lawrence will prove that she can do much more than act, hope you don't mind some sci-fi action violence, Men in Black will have a bit of girl power, Ryan Gosling could be taking a trip to the moon, and Tom Cruise might see Universal's first revived monster. So with that said, let's get things started. Thanksgiving was the time that the whole family can get together and practice their whole reunion for next month. It was also the time that they could head out to theaters and check out the latest films. But audiences seem to rather stick with last week's big shot, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. And it still remains in first place with a weekend gross of more than $51 million. However, the two new big movies remain strong despite Katniss in the way. Pixar's second animated feature this year, The Good Dinosaur, managed to grab second place with more than $39 million, and getting a Thanksgiving weekend total of almost $56 million. This is then followed by the highly acclaimed Rocky spin-off sequel, Creed, reaching up to third place with more than $30 million and a Thanksgiving weekend total of almost $43 million. Catching up from behind are the November duo Spectre and the Peanuts movie, getting almost $13 million and almost $10 million respectively. There seems to be a new term going around Hollywood called favor movies, in which studio executives agree to make some sort of personal passion project for an A-list celebrity in order to keep them from their more commercially appealing movies. However, The Hollywood Reporter looked into this, discussing how these movies like Sandra Bullock's R. Brandon Crisis or Angelina Jolie's By the Sea could now be unappealing to studios, considering how they massively flopped. For the latter, there was actually an explanation to why it was made. It turns out that the only reason why Universal agreed on making By the Sea is to hope that Angelina Jolie would agree to work for them on another movie that would be much more profitable. The suggestions lead to either star in the remake of Bride of Frankenstein or a sequel to Wanted. Now, these movies aren't officially greenlit yet, but an executive stated about keeping Jolie in their grabs that following our successful collaboration with Angie on Unbroken, we jumped at the opportunity to work with her again. Her script and vision for an intelligent and sophisticated film appealed to us, and we wanted to be a part of it. A stunt like this requires big risks, but they're going for it anyways. Paramount has teamed up with Dallas Buyers Club producer Rachel Winter and Boardwalk Empire creator Terrence Winter to go and make an adaptation of Sheldon Saltman's book, Evil Knievel on Tour. The book recaps the events of when Knievel performed the infamously failed stunt in 1974 where he tried to jump across Snake River Canyon with his rocket cycle and Saltman was there to promote it. The book was also known for Knievel himself to hate it so much that he broke Saltman's arm with a baseball bat. Yeesh. Coincidentally, this will not be the only Evil Knievel movie in the works, as Sony is in talks with NOAA director Darren Aronofsky to direct a biopic based on the famous Daredevil with Channing Tatum to star in the feature. It seems that some people are theorizing that Fox are starting to be convinced that maybe the new Fantastic Four movie sucks. 20th Century Fox has pulled out the sequel to the reboot of Fantastic Four out of its schedule. Or at least that's what Box Office Mojo did from its website. Some have thought that maybe the sequel is cancelled, considering that the movie was both a critical and box office failure, but no official word has been announced from Fox yet if they're either cancelling it or just pushing it back to a later date. Another crazy option they could go with is maybe another reboot, but again, that's just a theory, or maybe what people hoped they would do. Who knew that the Chinese were so interested in American rap culture? Chinese filmmaker Stephen Chang is making an unauthorized sort of biopic of acclaimed rapper Tupac Shakur called Until the End of Time. 
I say sort of, because the movie will center on a Chinese student who has to study on American civil rights and activism and decided to talk about Tupac with the rapper's ex-girlfriend. As you can see, a trailer is already released for it, so they're well into production. Of course, thanks to the success of Straight Out of Compton, this will not be the only Tupac movie coming out, since one is in talks of happening with the same actor who played Tupac in Compton, Mark Rose. He and his raps will be brought back to life by Chinese ways in 2016. She is Katniss, she is an actor, she is a beloved actress, and now she will be a director. Jennifer Lawrence, at 25 years old, is going to direct a movie called Project Delirium. Lawrence describes it by saying it's based on this article about mental welfare in the 60s, like an acid experiment gone terribly wrong. It's funny, I've wanted to direct since I was 16 and always thought I should start making steps towards that. If I had tried to do it earlier, I wouldn't have been ready. Now I actually feel ready. However, being a director won't be the only ability she'll be able to do in the industry. She'll also be writing a comedic screenplay with Amy Schumer. Get ready for the most mature Star Wars film you'll ever see. Well, okay, maybe not that mature, but at least by the rating. Star Wars The Force Awakens has received a PG-13 rating for featuring sci-fi action violence. This will be the first time ever that a Star Wars movie will get that rating, since the previous six films all had PG. This will also be the second film franchise for Disney that received the PG-13 rating behind the Pirates in the Caribbean films. Well, at least that doesn't include the movies that didn't get a sequel, you know? We'll see how nasty that sci-fi action violence will be once the film hits theaters on December 18th. You know what an alien blasting agency needs? A woman's touch. Producer Lori McDonald revealed to the BBC that they would like to include a prominent female lead in the fourth installment of Men in Black. The first movie did feature Linda Fiorentino's character becoming an agent, but that's only at the end of the film. This time, this new girl will be featured next to Agent J and K. Speaking of which, McDonald also mentioned that Will Smith could possibly return. However, it is unknown if this film will have any sort of impact on Phil Lord and Chris Miller's long-rumored crossover of Men in Black and 21 Jump Street. The previous film, Men in Black 3, does show promise that this follow-up will happen, as it managed to cash in $624 million at the box office in 2012. That's one small step for the production, one giant leap for... Well, nothing's official yet, so I got nothing. Universal is now considering to have Ryan Gosling to play the role of Neil Armstrong for the biopic First Man. Based on the biographical book of the famed astronaut by James Hansen, it was originally going to be directed and produced by Clint Eastwood. However, that's been changed to Whiplash's Damien Chazelle, who's using a script by Josh Singer. If Gosling accepts, this won't be the first time that he'll be with Chazelle, as they're currently both working on the musical film La La Land that's set to be released on July 15th, 2016. Universal's plans are starting to be in place in order to revive their classic monsters, and their first step they're taking is to reboot The Mummy. But the question is, who will be featured? I mean, considering that it is Universal, they want to have a big name star to be prominent on the comeback of these icons. Wait, wait, what, what does the title say? Tom Cruise? I guess he'll do. Universal is now in talks to bring in Tom Cruise to star in their reboot of The Mummy. The movie will be the first of many films that will hopefully be in the cinematic universe of Universal's classic monsters. Other creatures of the night they plan to reboot include Dracula, Frankenstein's monster and his bride, The Invisible Man, and Van Helsing. The Mummy reboot will be directed by Alex Kurtzman, and the curse will be laid upon us on March 24th, 2017. And that's all I've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to head on down to film-book.com for all the latest movie and TV news, along with their columns on the box office and their theatrical release schedule. Also, you can follow them on whatever social media you'd like. And while you're at it, you can follow me on my YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter if you're more into stuff like animation, Disney, and my weird sense of humor. 
If you are watching this on YouTube, then hit that like button and come subscribe to us and also leave a little comment on what you think on the news this week. If you were listening to this on a podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, then don't forget to rate and review what you just heard. Tune in next time for another round of Movie News Weekly, and until next week, see you later, dudes!